Billy Carson here, also known as Forbidden Knowledge. I got Billboard artist Donnie Arcade. If you didn't know, he was on Billboard for uh, eight weeks in 2018. Return of Enki album. And we're here now with Donnie Arcade. What's up, Donnie? Forbidden Knowledge, Billy Carson, man. Thank you for having me, man. Much love. Uh, if you don't know who this man is, you gotta look up, look up all his music. He's been putting out music for a very long time. More recently, has finally began to gain popularity in the area of conscious lyrics and conscious content. What's up, Donnie? Forbidden Knowledge, aka Billy Carson, man. Thank you for having me, man. A podcast, okay? That's where we at with it. Yeah, New man. Level. Hey, it's next level time. It's time to level up. You know what I mean? It's been a long time coming. Hey, thanks for having me on. Thanks for having me on, man. I'm excited to see what the, you know, see what the podcast game is all about. I know it's going to be spectacular. Hey, man, you know, it's, um, I started looking at a lot of people, uh, uh, you know, notable people that had podcasts, and I started going, wow, everybody's starting to get a podcast that has a decent size following. And I said, let me just look into it and see, you know, if it's uh, worthwhile. And I realized it extended my reach to even more people that may not even know who I am. Uh, and uh, just because, you know, of what happened to my social media account on uh, Instagram, the Forbidden Knowledge account, remember it got deactivated a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. So at almost one million, I, I mean, I was very fortunate to get it back, but a lot of people don't get that opportunity. But it just rose questions like, okay, well, if this goes down, you know, so luckily for me, it, it's not the only source of traffic that I'm yeah. dependent on. So and podcasting is just another way to reach out and put more legs out there to get out to more people. So I'm really excited about it, man. I think it's going to be real phenomenal. Oh, yeah. I think it's going to be super phenomenal, man. You know, the podcast game need more information, more knowledge, man. You know, more um, information-based podcasts, man. And I think you're the perfect guy for it, man. So uh, yeah, thanks man. for having me on, man. So what, what, yeah. what's good with you, man? How you feeling? Oh, man, I'm good, man. I'm tired. I'm covering up these red eyes with these shades, man. I've been going, you know, you know how I do, Donnie. Sometimes I go two, three days straight, nonstop, you know? Yeah, you know. Yeah. Hey, man, we all get these 24 hours. It's all about what you're going to do with them at the end of the day. That's right. That's right. That's what it's all about, man. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm the type of guy, I just don't believe in sleeping my life away. So, you know, I push myself to the limit. Some say it's, you know, it's going to make me crazy. But I mean, so far I haven't gotten crazy. It's been, it's been about 20 something years doing the same thing. So uh, as long as I can get up and do it, man, I'm gonna keep doing it, you know? And um, I wanna tell the people I kind of how like, you know, I, we ran into each other. So basically um, I started this group on Facebook called Anunnaki History, because I wanted to start documenting the history and getting community input as to who the Anunnaki were and uh, what they were all about and some of the history about them and interesting facts and and things like that through Facebook. So I started the Anunnaki History Group, and um, some gentlemen that uh, I used to do business with knew another guy <laughs> in Atlanta <laughs> named Ron Taylor. Uh, Amazing. And so, yeah, you know, so Ron, uh, he joined the group. I didn't really didn't know him directly per se at that time, just through somebody else. And then uh, he thought the group was interesting, and he uh, had a friend or has a friend named Donnie R.K., who he then said, look, you got to check this out, because he already knew that Donnie R.K. was on this frequency. Uh, and so the next thing I know, Donnie R.K. joins the group, and I go into my group one day, I log in, I see this video in here called Anunnaki <laughs> from Donnie R.K. <laughs> and, and listen, man, this video went viral in the network so quick and so fast i was like wow what is going on here this video first of all it's awesome the lyrics are tight it was amazing and uh you know it went viral i was like i gotta i gotta get a hold of this guy i gotta talk to him you know and uh so, so i reached out to you and you were more than willing to you know to talk and since then we collaborated on a lot of information man so Tell the people a little bit about your journey, man, into getting into music and, and, and getting into conscious music as well as where you started and how you got to where you are now. Absolutely. And a shout out to Ron Taylor for, you know, put, putting a bug in my ear about the Anunnaki group, man. And um, I've been doing it for a minute, man. You know, I, I, I was kind of born into music, you know, um, musical family. My older brother did music. I had an uncle who was very into um, Parliament, Funkadelic. So that's what really made um, me, you know, be, become this character, you know, just because I was, I was like one of those little kids who, um, I was just born into it, man. Just imagine coming into a world and there's all this 
George Clinton and Parliament, you know, MTV, yeah. hip hop, you know what I'm saying? You know, so coming up in the 80s, man, it was just like, um, it was like a new world, man. I, I think I, I was kind of born into the game with the video game world, mm. the 80s, you know, all that kind of created, you know, my um, fascination with space, you mm. know, and I think a lot of from the video games to a lot of the things that I heard my family listen to. But um, I was brought into it early, man. You know, I was always kind of rapping ever since, I want to say since grade school, man. I actually, I was rapping so much, you know, some of my friends was actually, they would tell you I was the first concert they ever saw in their wow. life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was actually, nice. on, yeah, I was like one of those kids who was rapping on stage, second, third grade, you know, yeah. each, each grade. And then when I got into later into school, we I was in drama class, so we took drama. And we actually mm -hmm. did plays and stuff. So I will always incorporate rapping with the play. You know, sometimes we mm -hmm. have Western plays and I'll be the rapper, you know. Right. So um, it was just, I was just really born into it. You know, I was always born into, um, into a world of, you know, I would say creativity. You know, one of my first albums I ever got was Michael Jackson Bad. That was the first album I got, and El, El Cool J Bad. So mm. those two albums was my first two albums, you know. So I remember just throwing a fit in the store, you know, because mm -hmm. my mother told me I, I can only get one of them. Yeah. So I threw a fit, and she ended up getting me both of them. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that was the origins, you know. But my, my, brick, my older brother and my uncle had a breakdancing crew. So I actually... I was the baby of the breakdancing crew. We actually run around the city of Cleveland yeah. and you do shows. And I used to blow their mind when they see this little baby go out there and breakdance <laughs> and spin on his head. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, man. So, man. You know, that was the immediate origins. And then I would say, you know, later on, I started taking it a little bit more serious and started mm -hmm. trying to figure out where studios were at and things like that. And my stepdad, used to see us, you know, trying to record on a tape recorder. We used to get little iced tea instrumentals and things like that and try to record, you know, and I actually, I actually got in trouble. The first time I ever recorded, I got in trouble for it, you oh, know, God. because the thing is, you know, just imagine being, um, you know, a young kid, you know, I'm about nine, 10, mm -hmm. and your mother go off to work. And then when your mother go off to work, we stayed in an apartment building, three story floor apartment building in um, Cleveland. And so when my mother go to work, I really didn't, I really, I wasn't supposed to leave the house. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, we would take this tape recorder and we'll go into the um, laundry mat on the second floor and close the door <laughs> and go in there and start recording. So when that, my mother had come back, the neighbors would start telling, you know, my mother, they was in there recording this and that and all that, mm -hmm. you know, but um, after a while, my stepdad saw that and said, you know what, I know where the studio is. Let me take y'all to a real studio. Mm, and he wow. packed us up and took us up to a real studio called Rampage Studios on, um, on I want to say, um, on, off of Lee Road in Cleveland. And actually, that's when I had, had a first chance of actually recording in a real studio. You know, that was sometime in the 90s, you know, way back in the day, man. But nice. since then, I've been hooked, man. Since then, you know, it's, it's been a long road, man. Many groups, you know. I, 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 would, I would call myself the ingredient. You know, I've been the ingredient yeah. for many re recipes and many groups and scenarios and things like right. that, man. Wow, that's nice, man. That's a great story. So, uh, you know, I went back and started listening or looking up some of your content on YouTube that was available. And um, between then, you know, I would say then being... Um, you know, five or six years ago, some of the oldest content that I saw, some of your original works that I saw you do, until now, I literally can see the growth in your your lyrical content. Not only just lyrically have becoming a master of it, but also I noticed your growth. I noticed, um, you know, the, the conversation changing, you know, where you yeah. kind of would dabble a little bit into some esoteric and dabble into aliens, just a little bit, get your toe wet and come back out. But so now I see it now complete flip and I see the complete complete mastery over the conscious rapping and the conscious lyricism. How'd that come about? Well, it was a constant evolution. You know, I would say it was always pieces of that, you know. Um, you know, even when I go back to my older stuff, it was it was like it was always there. You know, sometimes I experimented 
you know, because you're going through different phases of life. You know, you're learning yourself. You're out there. You're thinking you're this. You're thinking that you want to be from the street. You want to be a player. You want to be all these different things. But all these different things are what mold you. You know, you go through these different worlds, you know, and I think that's what kind of made me, you know, I don't know, just maybe relate to a little bit of everybody because I've been into all those worlds and, you know, and not that, you know, those worlds like took over everything that was about me, but I seen it all just coming up in Cleveland. I seen a little bit of everything and um, we was influenced by a little bit of everything, you know, but it was mm -hmm. always that sense of, you know, spiritual, you know, just being spiritual about something, you know, ha having some kind of um, responsibility Mm -hmm. um what you say you know and, and it got to a point where i wanted to say things that you know i can play to my mother or play to people that mm -hmm. you know because you know when i heard people like tupac and bob marley and all these great people who said something you know it wasn't so um you know knowledge based back then but even back then i had songs talking about the struggle and talking about um you know how things should be and different things like that and then even now it's still a constant evolution because i'm still learning you know but mm -hmm. i think now is a little bit more polished especially being around you man you know being you know hooking up with you man and getting more knowledge and you know you embracing me and, and bringing me in you know and saying hey yo ananaki that's the wave man let's go ahead you know what i'm saying and let's put a whole album together based on that you know because i remember that was the first thing you reached out to me when you said hey man you really want to you know take this to the next level you might want to do a whole album you know because i would have one or two songs you know what I'm saying even the the album i was working on you know when i made anunnaki was you know it was like two songs like that it was anunnaki and we're not alone was, you know those are two songs that was already on a little ep i was working on you know mm -hmm. but right. when you put that spark in my mind and say hey you know what you might you might want to go ahead and do that all the way and mm -hmm. you know some artists you know you can let your ego get in the way or you can let your knowledge base get on the, get in the way of what you already know but to me that was just you know a challenge like hey can you pull this off and it, and as you pull it off you pull yourself into the rabbit hole of knowledge and you 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 wake yourself up you know in in the quest of trying to do that you know so i would say i was always grounded man you know i always had a good heart ever since the beginning you know my folks were mainly church folks you know they weren't to the esoteric knowledge metaphysical knowledge but you know but still even in those worlds it was a sense of responsibility of you know what i'm saying itself you know because you know a lot of them didn't have the opportunities that we have now to have all this information you know they didn't have you they didn't have people so they just went by the word and this and that and that and it, and that's why i still respect everything you know i still respect all religions man i respect everybody man you know my whole meaning is to show love man to everybody you know and i want to spread love and make sure that you know whatever i do i don't want to you know disrespect anybody you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying if, I, if if what i gotta do gotta disrespect any group or anybody or make somebody feel bad for what they're doing then i feel like that ain't the frequency i want to be you know so but i would say man it was always in me man i surprise myself when i go back in time and i still you know even with, with my crew lt and you know star fox you know we was you know we got songs like about atlantis and different things we was always intrigued by you know a lot of that stuff man you know and it was like not until recently that we had a chance to learn more about it and try to get more deep into it but you know i would say it was always there spark i it's like a it's like a magical mission you know and the universe uses you in these ways and they you gotta go through those schools that's why sometimes you might have an artist who just it's just, just all about the knowledge but no man you gotta go through the dark worlds you gotta see everything you know you got to see everything to truly have something to say and truly know what you're saying mm -hmm. that's so true man you know one of the things uh obviously that i talk about the most is both the atlantean um and uh you know that's my book compendium of the animal tablets he's on the front cover he's got the big beak the big iceberg beak so yeah. what you were talking about in terms of going to darkness and bringing it to light that's what both was all about and that's yeah. why he has the ibis bird, the ibis bird beak because the, the beak is designed where the ibis bird has to put its beak deep, deep into mud to bring the, the food up out of the mud to get the sustenance. Wow. So it's, it's an allegory or an archetype of saying that, you know, to the, the, the way to achieve a higher level, 
is to go down into darkness and bring darkness to light. And yeah. that's the whole thing behind the Emerald Tablets and why I find it so powerful because it's really talking about reaching out that, that, um, that level of service to others and bringing love and light to the world. No matter where the, no matter where the people are, go down to that area and go ahead and drop it on them. Go ahead and drop those seeds of knowledge and wisdom on them and watch them sprout, watch them grow, and watch them seek the light as well. You know, and that's, uh, it's real powerful stuff, man. You know, so, you know, just some of the lyrics that I've heard you, man, you know, more recently, uh, you know, coming up with, um, it, it, I mean, I can literally write books on, the, on these lyrics, but I mean, you know, I, I don't think people really truly, you know what I'm saying, understand like how much research it takes to be able to drop lyrical content like yeah. you do. If you, you really got to become a student and, uh, you know, the student becomes the teacher because when the student is ready, the teacher will appear, you know what I mean? And, um, and I can really sense that, man, in your, in your lyrical content that your research is in depth. I mean, everything from, you know, whether it's conspiracies or whether it's uh, esoteric wisdom, whether it's uh, even uh, Asian, Asian uh, mysticism. I mean, yeah. you know, I, I mean, I can go into every aspect of consciousness, <laughs> quantum physics, quantum mechanics. You know, you, you, you know, you're touching on so many topics just in one song. In one song, it's totally mind blowing. And the way that you can even go in and even explain a little bit about what you're trying, what you're saying, people and double entendres that you're using, everything else, man. It's just been a pleasure to watch you know, the, the, the growth and expansion, man. I truly appreciate that. I mean, I really think, you know, most artists are an instrument, you know. So, like, even when, when I finish some of them songs, you know, I, I, I thank the universe because I know I'm not that good. You know what I'm saying? I know, you know, I am being used in ways, you know what I'm saying, that I couldn't even imagine. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of that doesn't even touch a paper. You know, it doesn't even, you know, I probably, you know, only time I would touch a paper if I got an idea and I'm not away from home and I just want to jot. And truthfully, you know, everything I usually write down doesn't make it, you know, it's like I don't like it because I, I learned how to channel lyrics without writing them. It's not that I just freestyle all the way through, but I can sit in front of the mic and write from my mind, you know what I'm saying? So I can think of four bars and then I lay those four bars. And then um, as the next four bars come up, it might be eight bars, it might be whatever, it might... You know, so really a lot of those frequencies and rhythms, you know, some of those things I hum, you know, mm -hmm. I will hum them and hear them. Sometimes I can go through the whole song and hum the whole song. Mm -hmm. Like, so even when I do songs, it's not really verse. Sometimes I might make, I might do the last piece of the song first, you know what I'm saying? Because I hear it and it's like, you know what, this piece got to go there. And then I go back and reconstruct it. And then mm -hmm. sometimes... I wake up the next morning and play and it, it's almost like listening to somebody else. This is like, wow, you know, you know, but it's a blessing, man. I'm truly humbled by it, man. You know, because I, I feel like what we do as music is beyond for entertainment. You know, it's just like the garden and it's just like the flowers. It's just like this whole universe is all doing something in alignment and they're all doing something beyond what they think they're doing. You know, we, we are flowers. We are, trees you know what i'm saying we're giving out these sounds we, what do these sounds really mean you know it's beyond our entertainment you know these flowers that we see out in the you know garden think they're probably entertaining but we don't, they don't know they're giving us oxygen and other things you know so they're actually keeping everything in alignment so i just try to look at it that way man you know i try to look at it in a more natural way and even when i pick the beats i try to pick more natural sound and beats, ancient sound and beats, more, you know, things that just kind of resonate with a frequency, you know, but, um, but yeah, man, it's a blessing, man, it's more on the way, and, uh, and really, when you hear this new one, it's, it's really, I, I'm really proud about this new one, because it went so deep, and it's really, you know, it, it's called the Book of Aliens, you know, so this, this album that's coming up, I really want to make things that's like time capsules, you know, mm -hmm. And even on, on, on there, I got a song called Humanoid, mm -hmm. which, which talks about the human race. You know, so imagine, you know, if somebody wanted to know about the human race that's not from planet Earth, yeah. you know, how can we explain the human race? And not just in a scientific way, but we go to sleep, we dream, we get, we, we get old, we got Hollywood stars, we got superstars, we got music we put it to rhythm and you know so these things will be foreign to something from somebody somewhere else they'd be like well what do y'all do they would right. they'd be like what's a superstar 
what's a what's music? <laughs> you know, these things will be foreign to something from somewhere else. So, yeah. you know, so this whole album, it breaks down, you know, all different forms of life, from plant life to robots to animals, you know what I'm saying? So each song is dedicated to a form of life, you know, and, and that's really what I want to do going forward, you know, is make more, you know, conceptual albums and more, you know, more things like that. And just, you know, it's just my contribution to the world. All right, that's beautiful, man. Yeah, you know, um, during a hurricane that came through, uh, I forget the name of this hurricane. Uh, I don't think it, it might have been hurricane. No, it was it might have been Hurricane Maria? When did I come up there to see you that one time? Was that during Hurricane Maria? Yeah, I want to say that was two thousand, early two thousand eighteen. I want to say, um, but I, I, it could have been in Maria, I believe. Yeah, I think it might have been Maria. But regardless, I, I drove from uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, straight to Atlanta. I get to Donnie Arcade's house and um, you know, I'm hanging out with Donnie Arcade because I'm like, I'm not about to hang out down here with this hurricane, you know. <laughs> and, uh, you know that's crazy. Now, hey. myself and Donnie and a few other artists had been uh, doing music together for about two years without ever even being in the same room, primarily using technology the way that it should be used to yeah. um, collaborate without yeah. having to go to clubs and party and get popping bottles with sparklers in them and you know, spending two dollars on VIP sections and all this crazy <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Just sitting at our computers in our houses and our homemade studios and pass files back and forth, send them over to a, an engineer, have them put together in the right way and then get them mastered and put them out in the, in the global distribution. And uh, yeah. but one of the most amazing things I gotta tell you, man, is, uh. I'm at your house and you go, okay, let's go ahead and let's make some music. Let's make some magic. So I'm like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> you know? The best part of the best hey, part of the thing. I'm witnessing something here that just like I tell people about this all the time. I see Donnie Arcade crank all the equipment up. Then he walks outside the backyard for a couple minutes, comes back in, grabs <laughs> the mic, and then starts a track and starts saying ad libs. <laughs> yeah. What's going on? What's really good? <laughs> then he punches out, punches back in again. Then he's laying hooks. I'm like, wait a minute, hooks, ad libs, hooks. Then, <laughs> All I'm, back I'm witnessing a genius here, right? I'm like, what is this guy doing? The next thing I know, he punches out, punches back in, and now he's dropping bars. And then when he's done, everything lines up. The ad libs, the hook, the Thank bars, you. and I'm going. I never seen anybody put a, a whole song together in reverse like this. And then, of course, <laughs> you can't write nothing down. Everything is basically right and right on the mic. And I'm just like blown away, man. Was, yeah, we laid, we laid on conspiracies and heart that day. You know what I'm saying? We yes. did heart because they it was that was the vibe of the rain. The rain inspired heart. You know, right. so it made me. You know, we still got to release that one. Still ain't put that one, yeah. one out yet, but. Um, but Harp, I think we did put out a snippet, but uh, we did Harp and Conspiracy that day. Yeah, yeah. You know, but man, you know, that was it's incredible. just, a, thank you, man. It, it's just a matter of just hearing different things, man. I yeah. think, you know, I, I've been doing it for a long time. So, you know, it's not that, you know, it's just, you know, just kind of like, and I engineer, you know, so it's like sometimes, you know, I, I would, you know, kind of, you know, say to, to all artists, you know, if you're going to be artists, learn how to engineer yourself so that way you can come up with your own flow you know you don't have to be at the mercy of somebody else recording you and you know mm -hmm. because really what me is really hard to work with somebody who i really need to record myself because it's like i move so fast if i need to delete something i need to delete fast or i need to cut this you know i need to almost be able to have my mouse right there while i'm recording so i mm -hmm. can do it now but you know and i can still do it other ways i learned all the styles so in certain situations you know, you can do it that way, you know, but yeah, man, that's, that's, I don't know, man, you know, it's, it's been kind of like the magic, man. I truthfully think that's where, you know, I haven't, I didn't, I had, you know, I had a little, you know, you know, little, um, I would say a little fans here and there before I started doing that. But once I just left the paper alone, that's when I made Anunnaki. And that's when mm -hmm. I, that's where all them songs came from was putting the paper down and just yeah. going off the vibe, you know. Yeah, and I'm not no crazy. paper. That was just straight, you know, just speaking into the mic. Nice, man. I love it. I, listen, I witnessed it, so I can talk <laughs> firsthand. You know, I've seen it firsthand, you know, and I, and I know 
the, the level you know that that you that you achieved in this in this whole game and how you literally download these lyrics, man, and spit them out in a way that really puts everybody on a a love frequency, a love vibe, you know. And um, it, it's been amazing to watch, man. I know you just uh, recently got back from California, Burbank, California, from the Mystery School. Oh, how was man. that experience, man? Man, I was. I mean, it, it was like a dream come true, man. You know, and I got to give you know you and Dame Dash much love and appreciation, just. You know, just to be in the building, man, you know, to come out there, man, you know, it's not too many people to get that opportunity to, you know, see a legends, man, two legends and to doing the thing, man. But um, it was amazing, man. It was amazing just having a live band, yeah. you know, going out there and doing our thing and um, just, you know, getting the love, man. I, I will say everybody that was there for the mystery school had their hearts open, their minds open to get knowledge. They was there. I mean, it was a beautiful thing to see, man. And it, and it's just letting you know the world is changing, man. You know, right. everywhere I go now, man, people are getting more um, mystical. You know, you get people got crystals, people talking about how they eat, people thinking yeah. about how they treat people, man. I, but this is a magical thing. It's not just us, man. We might have been at the beginning of the cusp of it happening. But the whole world is changing. You know, that's what, it, what makes me believe that we are going into a higher density and a higher mm -hmm. frequency of the planet because everybody is on this wave. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's, it's, not a, it's not just a few people, man. I, even people who still, you know, kind of in the sleep zone, they're waking up. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know it's really amazing because, um, you know, being obviously that we're, we're both black men, um, one of the hardest battles that I've had in this whole conscious um, uh, mission it has been reaching out to other uh, you know, people of color because the systems that um, have mentally enslaved us have been ingrained into the DNA by force. And it, it's epigenetic memories which take many, many generations to relinquish, to reprogram. Uh, so what, was, what I was so excited about when I went to the, uh, you know, to show up to teach the mystery school at Dame Dash Studios was when I walked into the actual class in the studio and I saw so many mixtures and races of people there. Yeah. It wasn't just one race. And uh, it really like made me feel so happy, man. And I was so pumped up. It gave me even more energy that the energy that I needed to be able to stand up there for 12 hours. <laughs> and teach the class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You was up there, man. You was up there for a minute, man. You know, but, but the thing is your style and grace and showmanship, man, you know, I mean, that's that's a true art and talent, man. You know, to go up there and be smooth and give the information and, you know, to get, a, get it across effectively, you know. You know, and that, I mean, you know, you got to give props when props is due, man. To go up there and get that kind of information for that long period of time and keep people intrigued, man, that's a magical thing, man. That goes back to all the magical people who didn't grace this earth, man, and speakers, you know. It's, it's very rare that you get to see it in live time. You know, I know you, so it's like, you know, it's, it's all on there, you know what I'm saying, praises, man, because, you know, you see great people, man, and you got to tell people they're great. Well, you know, when they hear, and we all hear, man, get people, let, get, you know, get people their props, man. You know, we're witnessing history being made. You know, we're, we're doing something that people will be reading about. And, you know, and they'll be going back to all these old videos. They might be holographic videos converted over to holographic format, you know. But you, you'll true. see all these older videos 50 years from now, somebody's flying car and they'll be just riding and zoning out to it, you know. So yeah. right now we're speaking to the future. Hey man, I, I believe in it, man. I believe in that so powerful, man. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, man. You like I tell people, even I said at the mystery school, you know, when people say, What do I do for a living? You know, I create ripples in space time that alter future realities in the third dimension. And I really mean that. That's what we're all doing. We're all time traveling. You time travel with your lyrics. I time, time travel with the knowledge and the information that I put out. And yeah. together, collectively, we alter the future of life on not only on this planet, but in the entire universe, basically, you know? I want to say I saw the ripple change, man. And I'm not just saying to take the credit, but I saw like when we was pushing 2000, you know, I'm saying 16, I saw the ripple. You know, sometimes people never could see the full timeline. Like we was able to zoom out. Mm -hmm. You know, and stop time and zoom all the way out. We'd be like, hold up, man. This piece, you know, affected this piece and this piece went over here. I really want to say, you know, we had a big, you know, influence on this conscious thing, man. Because, you know, we was, you know, 
it wasn't too many people that was on that wave, you know, three years ago, you know, and I want to say, you know, it's just amazing, man. It's just an amazing thing, man, to push the envelope, man. It, and this is only still the beginning. Yeah, yeah, it's still only the beginning, man. But we definitely, um, you know, not that we're saying it egotistically, it's just that it's the fact that we really were on Absolutely. the cusp of the you know, pioneering this thing and, and, and tapping into a lot of people of power started listening to us, especially when I started putting all of your lyrics behind my content on Forbidden Knowledge Instagram. Oh, no. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to say, I started to see it every year. You know, I, I come from 300 followers, uh, two likes, you know what I'm saying? So before you know it, I just started seeing people come through, and, I, and I'm always humbled and grateful for it, man. You know, I never take it for granted, man. You know, I, every opportunity to thank people, man, and respond, mm -hmm. you know, do everything, man. You know, I truly appreciate it, man. You know, I'm grateful for being here, you know, because, you know, it's like, finding your home. It's like you just being a nomad and you just freelancing and to find your home and to find other people. And that's where, you know, it was so dope to see you hook up with the, you know, people from Black Magic 363, mm -hmm. hook up with, you know, Danikin and Dame Dan. I mean, you know, these are powerful connections of people, man, who are all on the quest. You know, we're all still learning, but we're still on the right quest, you know, and I feel like we are all the you know, teachers, you know what I'm saying, the mystery schools, as many mystery schools, you know. Yeah. That's right. You're absolutely right, man. You know, uh, and I got to give you, man, a, a, a great deal of thanks, too, because uh, for two things that you plugged me into, for just being so alert and being aware and open to the universe, one of them is um, one day you hit me up and was like, hey, you know, uh, Dame Dash is following you on Instagram. And I was like, really? <laughs> you were like, yeah, he's been following you for a while. And I was like, I didn't even know. So I followed him back. But me following him back triggered a direct message conversation, which triggered uh, a phone call, which then triggered me a week later hopping on a plane and going to California. Wow. And uh, we had such a good conversation on the phone. I'm supposed to meet him at the studio. He didn't get to the studio that day. Next thing I know, I'm coming to his house. He's like, wow. hey, just come to this address. I'm like, okay. <laughs> 9020. They got, wow. I'm like, they got studios in 90210 Beverly Hills. It sounds like a TV show. <laughs> I pull up to this hotel of a house, you know, and uh, he welcomes me in with open arms. And, uh, you know, it's like we was brothers for forever, you know. And uh, But you definitely made that that futuristic jump to make that synchronicity, man. And I appreciate that. Um, and then another one that you did, that was uh, Black Magic uh, Rich from Black Magic 363 on YouTube. Once again, hey, uh, this guy got a big podcast on <laughs> online. Yeah. Hey, Forbidden knowledge, <laughs> man. You know, I must much props to both of them cats, man. You know, man. Shouts out to you know Rich, Rick, um, brother Rich, and uh, Black Magic Three Six Three, and and many um you know props to Dame Dash, man. You know, true humble brother, man. You know, true. You know, man. Somebody that opened up their doors and let us in and let us you know grace the stage and you know yeah. and even you know. This, you know, just, uh, you know, courtesy, man, you know, it's, it's a blessing, man, to, you know, meet people like that, man, you know, that's been in the game and that's legends and that's, you know, humble and, you know, open up to knowledge and, you know, and it's doing, you know, the whole conscious community a big favor by, you know, putting that stamp on it, man. So, you know, much shout outs to um, Dame Dash and Dame Dash Studios, Dame Dash Networks, man, you know, thank you, you know, for having me up there, man. And thank you for, you know, inviting us out there, man. You know, I wow. To, I had to bring you out there because you're the one who connected me to Dame Dash, man. So I had to, you know, you yeah, know. I'm truly really humble, man. Yeah, truly. So, you know, yeah, Can't man. wait to come back out there. <laughs> oh, it's going to be soon, too. Uh, now, are you going to be going out to California soon to perform again? Well, I'm going out there, I want to say, two, um, two. 222. So February 22nd, 2020, we have a um, vegan festival, um, which we'll have some other, other people on the roster, some um, some great other artists that's going to be on there. But um, we'll be out there performing, you know, back out there in Orange County, California. Yeah. Okay. I will be there because I'll be, uh, I'll actually be the keynote speaker at that event. That's the 222 wow. event, February 2nd, 2020. Um, look for us promoting that soon. And Look for us. We, we, we've already kind of put it out there. So, you know, we definitely want everybody to come on out. And I think what we got to do, Donnie RK, is while we're out there, you got to come back to Dame Dash Studios and I got to bring you on to the Forbidden Arts TV show. We got to do a show. 
Absolutely, man. It, it'll be an honor and a pleasure, man. You know, I had such a great time the first time, and I can't wait to get back out there, man. You know, it was all butterflies, and it, you know, just to get out there and be around legends, you know. But once I got there, man, it felt like home, man. You know, everybody, you know, it was a super warm welcome, man, and um, the performance was cool, man. Shout out to the band. I didn't get a chance to get the band members' names, man, but, you know, much love and shout out to them brothers, man, because them dudes yeah. killed it. Oh Richard Wagner, Cruz, Jackson Turner. Yo, Landrell, Forbidden yeah. Knowledge, man. It, it was epic. It was epic, man. It was, it was so phenomenal, man. I'm looking forward to, uh, to you know, working with you again and uh, seeing you live again in California at the 222 event and then get you on the show, a Forbidden Knowledge show at DTV. Uh, and, uh, yeah, man, but thanks for coming on, man. I appreciate you, man. And, uh, I just wanted to give people an opportunity to find out a little bit more about you. So where can they find your work? Well, they can find everything. You know, I have donnyrk.com. That's the main website. And then, um, you can follow me on all social media platforms. Um, that's Donny, D-O-N-N-Y, A-R-C-A-D-E, like the video game. Instagram, Facebook, I'm on TikTok, just joint TikTok. So, you know. Help me get some followers on there, please. You know, check me out because it's going to be some exclusive content going over to TikTok, Twitter, SoundCloud, YouTube, Spotify, all the streaming platforms. You know, new album on the way. It's called The Book of Aliens. Um, you know, it's going to be super amazing. You know, and it's it's just an amazing thing that's going on. You know, but um, but definitely, you know, check us out. You know, man. Um, you know, it's on the way. Okay, beautiful, man. All right, well, thanks for coming out, and I'll definitely have you on, an, uh, on a future episode very soon. All right, well, thank you for having me, man. Much love, forbidden knowledge, Billy Carson, man. Thank you so much, man. Talk to you soon. Let's go. Okay, man.